Hello everyone and welcome to Live with Janome. I'm Miriam Coffey and it is a pleasure for you guys, it's a pleasure for me for you guys to be here in my studio. Um, again, my name is Miriam Coffey. I am an education specialist here at Janome America and today I'm excited to show you guys all about decorative stitches. So I hope you guys are excited because we've got two different ways to learn how to do decorative stitches, on how to combine decorative stitches. Now, depending on the machine you have, it may determine if you can do both of them or just the one. But, so regardless of what machine you have, stick around because you can use this technique as long as you have a machine that can do any sort of decorative stitch. So, as long as you don't have a straight stitch machine, this technique is for you. So, let's go ahead and get started. Um, there's just a few supplies that we'll need. So simply just some little thread snips and then some fabric and tear away stabilizer. So just my fabric and then some tear away stabilizer. Now I prefer the tear away stabilizer that's a bit more fibrous. Um, and I'm gonna show you a close up view of this. So this is the more fibrous kind, as you can see, there's kind of fiber sticking out here, so it's not a clean tear. You get the sort of fibrous um, stabilizer, but as you can see, it's super easy to tear. Um, so it still leaves a, some fibers in your stitches, so it gives it a little extra stability, but it's a lot faster to tear away and cleaner to tear away. Um, now there's not a particular brand that I use. There are several brands that have the same type of stabilizer. Just make sure it's a little bit more of a fibrous, but if you have a particular tearaway stabilizer that you prefer, I'm sure that one will work just great. Um, all it really needs is to be able to be removed afterwards, um, unless you want that stabilizer to stay in for that extra stability. Now, let's go back to this other screen um, because this is an example of one of the ways of using tear away of one of the examples of stitch stacking which is the first of the two ways of combining decorative stitches now this is a very simple stitch stacking because it's just two different it's the same stitch stitched next to each other in two different colors now let's go ahead and zoom here a little bit closer so as you can see here, it's the same stitch. It's just stitched in the opposite color um, of the fabric that it's currently on. One thing that's also um, important to think about and to consider when you're doing decorative stitches is the weight of thread that you're using. The weight of thread can really determine the look that you're going to get from the decorative stitch. So if you use a thinner weight thread, let's say an 80 weight, poly like a deco bob or a, um, that is going to give you a very delicate fine look to it so you may want to consider shrinking the st stitch length or the stitch and or the stitch width on the opposite end of thing if you use let's say a 30 weight um, or thicker um, you could you're going to get a very different look it's going to be a little bit bulkier um, and a little bit more maybe um, whimsical or a hand look sort of look um, as if you were hand embroidering it. So consider that playing with thread weights when doing decorative stitches. But just like any time you do decorative stitches, always do a test stitch or two because you never know what it's going to look like when it's actually in real life. Um, I will show you on the screen itself that there are a few, um, that there are a handful of machines that do have a display of what the stitch is going to look like as you make adjustments, but everything looks a little bit different in real life. So you may want to stitch it out just to see if you want it to be a little bit wider or narrower um, or whatever, what have you. So let's go over a few more examples. Here is another example of stitch stacking. So stitch stacking here, this is a stitch stacking that looks a little bit more like lace and is done in the same color. So as you can see here, I have actually five different stitches that I've used to give me kind of an overall lace effect. 
I could even do this on tulle and or an organza and stitch it out and then cut it out and applique it onto another piece of fabric so it really would truly look like lace. So let me pull this up a bit closer so you can see. So as I started, I started with this center decorative stitch and then after I stitched my desired length, I then went back, changed my stitch, and then stitched parallel, connecting the edge of this first stitch to my blanket stitch. And then I mirror imaged it to get to the second side, and then reversed back and forth. You can also, like I've mentioned before, play with the weight of thread when you're doing your decorative stitch, as well as the color. So this is another example of stitch stacking where I used a thicker weight thread as well as changed colors. And you can also play with a more traditional or utility decorative stitch um, or a more utility stitch to add a decorative element to your project. This is a patchwork quilt that I used um, and used my satin stitch and triple stitch to actually quilt my um, wall hanging. So I'm going to pull this again a little closer so you can see. So I started off with doing a zigzag over my seam and then triple stitched on either side as well as changed colors. I also used embroidery thread on this so it has a little bit of a shine to it which I think adds a little bit of um, fun little color. So not only can you use um, your decorative stitches. You can also use your utility stitches to add decorative elements to your projects. And then lastly, in the decorative, the stitch stacking examples. So this is a pumpkin that I made, which you can see this full pumpkin. I used some more stitch stacking here to add some different elements. So I used this this is three different stitches to get this overall stitch. I use blanket stitches on either side, a triple stitch in the middle, and then this X stitch in the center. And I did use these in the same color, so, except for that triple stitch. So it kind of looked like it was one bigger stitch, even though they're actually three different stitches. And then lastly, is the second way of combining decorative stitches, which is Let's see, I think my camera froze. There we go. So this is combining your decorative stitches where you use a single stitch from a multiple different decorative stitches. So this actually has three different stitches in it to get this overall decorative stitch. So this looks like it could easily be a built-in decorative stitch, but it's actually three separate stitches combined. And this is what we're gonna go over. So first of all, it started with this little staircase stitch. Then it did this diamond. And then I added another staircase stitch. And then this was a different type of staircase stitch. And then it just repeated and repeated and repeated. So this is what we're going to stitch out today. And then this is another example of combining stitches. So I used the X stitch and then a handful of straight stitches until I repeated. And I also started in the same spot so that all of my X's are even with each other. And the way I did that was I drew a line so that I would measure off and start at the exact same spot. This line is actually in the seam, but I would draw a line and that way I would always start it. Let's say if I wanted to start, always start here, I would start here and then I would start here and then here. And then that way, when it's on the repeat, it's going to line up exactly all the way down. So not only can you combine stitches, but you can also isolate stitches. 
And here's the little example of a, this is a whole handkerchief that has four of these clovers around the edges. And I isolated a heart stitch to create, and stitched it up four times, to create this um, clover stitch. And I did a whole video on this project a couple years ago, I believe, but if you looked up clover or four leaf clover or St. Patrick's Day, um, I'm sure this video is still up and you could see the full tutorial on it. So let's go ahead and switch angles. So I'm going to leave that there and we're going to go to the front. And this may take a second. I have to add a second camera because I am a camera short today. So my apologies for having to switch this over. Give me just a second. All right, sorry about that guys. All right, so now everyone should see the screen of the machine. And I'm going to show you first, let me actually, let's just go back to the um, beginning so I can show you the whole process. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to select a decorative stitch. So I'm going to go to my decorative stitch icon and select any stitch that I want. I'm gonna to go to heirloom because that's one of my, where a lot of my favorite stitches are. So now depending on the machine that you have, it may vary on how you get to this screen. Um, your decorative, you may get your decorative stitches somewhere else. So it may look a little bit different um, and you may get there slightly differently, but as long as you can get to where you can get to your decorative stitches and if you have a touch screen, if you look for this icon here at the bottom. So this first icon has three hearts stacked on top of each other and they are blue. Now some of them, some machines, they may be yellow. So your color may be a little bit different, but the icon's gonna be the same. Um, there may be, I believe the 15,000, um, they're up in the top corner um, and some of the other machines are at the top. Um, but this particular is here at the bottom. And if you look at the decorative stitches here, so this is my display bar. And when I adjust my stitches, so I'm making this narrow. As you can see, that diamond has gotten narrower. And I can also shrink them down. And I've gotten a completely look, a different look with this stitch. Now I'm going to select that icon that has the three hearts and this is combining stitches. So I'm going to select that and see how my display is no longer there. There's not any stitches there because I haven't selected a stitch yet. So this is when I could select that sort of staircase step, um, stitch and then maybe that diamond. And then what I can even do is use my arrows to go back up and now you can see how that diamond is now blue. That means I'm editing or that particular stitch is has the ability to be edited. So now I can increase or decrease that stitch. So you see how that is narrower. I have now made it the width of it 7 and the length 2.0. I'm going to go arrow down and now I'm going to hit another one, but I'm going to do a big one this time. And I'm going to do another one. I'm going to go up and now I can adjust this smaller to match the first one. So seven, continue to shrink that down to seven and to two. And then 
when I start to stitch, it will stitch from the beginning again. If this is, if I wanted to add any others, I could add another. And let's go ahead and stitch this out, move it over here. So I'm going to stitch it on this side. stitch out just one more rotation so you can see it repeat several times. And then we're just going to cut our threads. And let's Switch angles here so we can see this stitched out. So first it did that little staircase step and then we did a big diamond, small, uh, small diamond, big diamond, small diamond, and then it just repeated over and over again. So it looks like it could be its own decorative stitch, but I created it. Now I could also save this to my machine depending on the machine that I have. if I wanted to, um, or I could combine more stitches. I can also, on this machine, switch open. I can also add them so that they are a hand style stitch, which makes it a little bit more, a little less perfect, so it's gonna be a little bit more imperfect to make it look like it is a hand look as if I hand embroidered it. So as you can see how simple it is to combine decorative stitches, let's just quickly go back and we're gonna do some stitch stacking. So we're just going to stitch this out quickly. Start on a new piece of fabric. Here. All right, we're just going to stitch this out, readjust this. We're going to stop it, cut our threads. Now I'm going to switch stitches. Let's. Now I'm going to switch to a um, kind of like that staircase one. I'm going to lower my foot and I'm going to line up where my needle is going to hit right up along the edge of or the points of those diamonds. threads. And now what I can do is I can do this on the other side as well. Um, and I'm going to actually mirror image it. So it will be the mirror image on this side. And I'm just going to lower it again, readjust it so that my needle falls right at the tip or the point of those diamonds. that and then 
cut our threads. That got a little off, but I could even add a, another stitch to this. So like I mentioned before, I'm a big fan of that triple stitch. So I'm gonna add that triple stitch in the center here, right at that intersection between the two pieces, um, between the tips and the staircase step. threads. Now this I could also, I'm going to do one more right on the other side. I could even change threads with this. And we'll cut our threads. Now let's switch angles so I can see, so I can show you the closer angle of that. So you can see how cool that looks. And I could even, I could keep building and building. Now it, I did get a little wonky here um, when I'm sewing in front of the angle, in front of the camera, not always the best. Um, can't always sew at the best angles with cameras everywhere. Um, but as you can see, it looks really cool. I could even mirror image it even further and do it where the staircase is nested inside of each other and then continue to build on top of it or see if there's a different decorative stitch that would look um, even cooler with it. So let's switch angles one more time. Let's pull this in front so you have something to look at. Well, I switch angles. Now, I hope you guys have enjoyed that quick tutorial on using decorative stitches and how to combine them. Uh, because I really do think once you guys start using this, it really will open a brand new box of uh, can of worms of creativity um, for you guys because decorative stitches can be a really, really fun. Um, and when you get to combine your own and basically make your own up, it can really open up the doors even further. So I hope you guys have a fantastic day and I will see you guys next time and happy sewing. All right. Bye guys.